Hello and welcome to Channel 2S, everybody. I'm your host, Second Soundwave, and even though it's been a while, we're back again for another episode of Gunpla News. So as you can see on screen right now, guys, today we are going to be starting the video talking about everyone's favorite, the Master Grade Barbatos. But before we do that, as always, we gotta give a quick thank you to channel sponsor, New Type HQ. New Type HQ at this point probably needs no introduction. You can buy your Gunpla from them, your paint, your tools, whatever you want. They are based out of the US. They've been helping out this channel for quite a few months now. And if you want to support Channel 2S, you can use code Channel 2S to save 10% off your first order from New Type. And yes, it is just your first order now, unfortunately. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's actually talk about that cool new piece of Master Grade box art. So this is part of the box art for the Master Grade Gundam Barbatos. Now, this is part of the art and not the full art because this actually got leaked. Now, I'm not sure exactly how this was leaked. I think it had something to do with one of Bandai's official social media accounts accidentally using this photo early as like a background or something. And that's kind of where the square aspect ratio came from. But no matter how this came out, it does give us a really cool look at what the box art of this kit's gonna be. I love Master Grade box art. I love the detail on this one, how they've captured the rocks and dust exploding up into the air. This is one of those iconic Barbatos moments. The first time you see the Barbatos in the show outside of the hangar, when he just rushes up on that graze and absolutely destroys it. Now they have changed it up a little bit to where he has the full shoulder armor on during that scene. I think it's a pretty welcome change though. It would have been kind of weird if the picture on the front of the box was of his weird bare bones basic form that I've never really been a fan of anyways. So it's cool they kind of bent the rules of the lore a bit and added in those shoulder pads. We did also get to see some magazine photos of the Mastery at Barbatos that I think is mostly stuff we've already seen. I mean, this kit's been known about for so long. We've pretty much seen everything there is to see on this kit and talked about everything there is to talk about on this kit. We already know it's amazing. We're all waiting for it. Well, I am actually noticing just now that it looks like the shoulder emblems are made out of translucent plastic, which I don't remember. So that's kind of cool at least. But I mean, it's got some fantastic color separation going around the back. The white and the gray just looks beautiful. And the only thing with this kit that I have noticed some people talking about is the cockpit is a little bit weird. Now this is not exactly how Barbatos's cockpit worked in the anime. And some people aren't too happy about that. I've heard some people theorize that maybe there's gonna be multiple kind of different ways you can open the cockpit, like how on some of the RX-78 kits, you can open the hatch or you can slide open the little panel. I don't think this is going to be that way. I think this is just how the cockpit opens and it was probably a compromise they had to make for the design. Now to me personally that doesn't really bother me since I don't really fiddle with the cockpits on my kits basically ever. I really only ever open them once or maybe twice when I'm building the kit just to see how they work and that's pretty much the last time I ever touch them. And since it is a new month, the month of November that we're already a week into because I'm a lazy bastard, we have a whole new set of box art to look at. So we're going to be starting off with the Future Century Death Army which really caught up to me. I forgot this kit was coming out this month. So this was a bit of a surprise to me. The box art on this really reminds me a lot of the Leo's box art where the background is just an endless army of death armies. And I gotta say, it actually does look pretty cool. The Core Gundam real type color and Mars 4 unit is our first variant for the Earth 3 slash Core Gundam. Now it's interesting what they're doing with the box art here where it's not purely the artwork where one half is the artwork, but the other half is a very build custom X-esque kind of demonstration of what you actually get in the box. They're literally just showing you plastic pictures of the model on the front, which I gotta say is kind of weird to see on a regular retail high grade. I'm so used to the front of the box just being that big, beautiful artwork that seeing pictures of the actual model just makes it look kind of tacky. So yeah, that's pretty weird. I guess it's part of that thing they're doing where they're kind of incorporating the build custom kits into the main line. We saw that with the first couple they did where they're not numbered as a separate thing. They are part of the main high grade re-rise line. And I guess this is sort of to demonstrate that this model is both a weapons pack and a figure. And I guess it is kind of important that they make that distinction because as we'll be seeing a little bit later in this video, there will be some packs for the Earth 3, or I want to call it the Earth 3 just because that's a better name to me than Core Gundam, but there will be some packs for the Core Gundam that are just the pack on their own. So I guess they just want to emphasize that you do get a Core Gundam with this set. And it's pretty much the same deal with the V2 unit. You can see both of the individual segments of the box. You can see the artwork. I do not like how bare bones both the V2 and the Mars 4 are without their extra weapon packs, and I do still think it was really cash grabby of Bandai to separate those out. But hey, at least it's not as bad as one of the other sets we're going to be looking at later, so that's something. The new Xeon Gundam is one that I've seen a lot of people be not that impressed with, and while I was kind of hyped for this at first because I thought it looked pretty cool in the initial images, I've kind of lost a lot of my hype for it too. It looks really big and clunky and awkward, and while I do like the old new Gundam mold, I don't know if it was a good idea to reuse it in 2019. At the very least, the box art doesn't seem to make any false promises as the pose this figure is in is very basic, and they're pretty clearly 
kind of suggesting that you're really not going to be able to get much of anything fancy out of this guy anyways. Next we have the Valkylander, which is part of his mobile suit. It's an interesting little thing they have going on here, the SD Estrella that turns into the dragon. Now they are showing both modes here on the front of the box, which is interesting because I seem to remember the original box art mock-up they showed us for this kit only showing the dragon mode. Now I'm gonna try to see if I can dig up that old picture and put it on screen here, but if I can't and someone can direct me to where I could find it, that would be great because I'm pretty sure I definitely remember seeing box art for this that was just the Valkylander on its own. And finally for this month, we have the ever awesome SD cross silhouette line getting expanded once more with the Wing Gundam Zero EW. Now this is a pretty welcome addition to the line. And if you haven't picked up anything yet from cross silhouette, I actually would recommend picking this one up because the cross silhouette line is pretty awesome and definitely not something you should be sleeping on even if you're not such a big fan of SDs. I mean, I wasn't and I ended up loving the line. All right, so next we have a new build divers kit that we don't have a ton of information about and that is the G Ls. Now this is not the G self variant from the mobile game, this is one from the manga. But even if it's not the G-Self variant that you or I might be more familiar with, it is a still a pretty awesome looking kit. I do like some of the changes they made to the design. It has this really cool evil look to it. However, because of how Bandai announced this, it's not exactly clear if it's gonna be a retail or a P Bandai kit. Now, seeing as how long they've gone without opening up pre-orders on the web shop for it, I would assume it's probably a retail kit at this point, but we haven't gotten any kind of real confirmation of that yet. Due to the unpopularity of the G-Self and the obscurity of this design, it really wouldn't surprise me if it was P-Bandai, but then again, I could just as easily see this being retail as well. All right, so back when I was talking about the V2 and how I didn't like how they split up the weapons and how I said there was another thing we'd be looking at later that I felt was even more cash grabby, well, this is it. So this is the as of yet unnamed aquatic pack for the core Gundam. Now the problem with this thing is you'll notice there's a little bit more on it than there was the last time we saw it. Well, that's because not only is the armor a separate pack that you have to get for one of your existing core Gundams, but you also have to buy an additional weapons pack for it as well. So in order to make the proper version of this variant of the core Gundam, you need to buy an Earth 3 or a Mars 4 or a V2. You're gonna have to buy this armor set, and then you're also gonna have to buy a weapons pack on top of that. So in order to make this form, you will need three kits. And even if two of those kits aren't that expensive, how hard would it really have been for them to pack the weapons with the armor? I was already pretty iffy on how cash grabby some of these core Gundam variants were with packing the armor and the Gundam separately but this one I think takes it way too far. But moving on from Bandai's questionable business practices regarding Build Divers Re-Rise, let's talk about P Bandai because everyone loves P Bandai, am I right? So it's been revealed that we will be getting quite a few new P Bandai kits referencing the Gundam side stories, which are a series of games for Gundam that have all these cool mobile suits that you never actually see in the show. I've always been a fan of these because they've been the home of some of my favorite mobile suit designs from the corners of the Gundam universe that no one really talks about. And it seems like with this new batch of P Bandai kits, we're finally getting the rest of the suits from Missing Link. So we're gonna be starting it off with the Slave Wraith, which was the main suit in the series before the Pale Rider. It's kind of a mix of Ground Gundam, Blue Destiny, and some new stuff as well. You can see it is reusing the parachute pack from that P-Bandai version of the Ground Gundam. It's also got some new shoulders, a new head, but on the whole, it's a pretty simple variant. However, being pretty much the main mobile suit of the series, it is pretty cool that we're finally getting a proper kit of it. Next up, we are getting the Missing Link Colors version of the Pixie, which is basically just a darker and gloomier looking version of the suit. I'm pretty happy to see this come out because one thing I was actually thinking about not that long before this got announced was we really haven't seen a Pixie reissue in a while and the kit's getting a little bit hard to find. And seeing as it's almost a brand new kit, I was kind of surprised that Bandai hadn't made more of these. So while this isn't the same as a reissue of the, in my opinion, superior color scheme that we got before, it's still a step in the right direction and it's entirely possible that they're gonna reissue the original version as well to accompany this on release. Well, we don't have the greatest pictures of it. We also did get confirmation that we will be getting the missing link version of the GM ground type, which is just a flat out recolor of it in the colors of the other two suits with the ground Gundam's parachute pack. So here you can see the whole team together and they look pretty awesome as a set which is probably why they're releasing them all around the same time. And to round out the Missing Link set we are also getting a kit that I've been kind of wondering about for a long time because this is the Missing Link version of the Afrit Schneid which as you'll notice is a little bit different from the Unicorn version. It has the standard Afrit shoulders and he has a big old Heat Hawk. 
He's also got the Goose custom style machine gun on his arm and probably a couple other minor changes, but those are the ones that jump out to me immediately. Now, while I'm not as big a fan of this version of the Schneid aesthetically as I am of the Unicorn version, this one is gonna be a lot easier to manage because he won't have those stupid little knives all over his body that constantly fall off. And if you're a fan of Missing Link, as far as I know, this is pretty much the main antagonist suit of the game. So if you're a Missing Link fan, it's basically a must buy. A lot less of a must buy is another P Bandai kit we'll be getting eventually, which is the real great Uma Lightning Zaku. I don't really know what their market it is for these. I've never been a fan, even though I do like some of the MSV pilots, I've never been a fan of just the 14, 16 different Zaku high mobility type recolors they put out in the P Bandai line for the Master Grade. I always thought it was really lazy. And I'm honestly kind of disappointed they're just repeating the whole thing with the real grades. I mean, who even bought the Gabby Hazard version of this, really? I really don't get Bandai sometimes. All right, so we're back into the cool P Bandai kits. This is the Hazanthalay 2 Raw. This is the AU colored version that comes with the AU colored version of the Harududu 2. And if you haven't seen the Xanthalay 2 yet, this thing is absolutely massive. There's a picture of this thing I'm probably gonna throw up on screen right now that shows you that it is basically the size of a master grade kit. So this is a big, big model kit. It looks really awesome in flight. And yeah, it's probably gonna be a bit of a brick, but it's still gonna be a really cool looking brick. The flight mode already looked pretty awesome on the original Xanthalay, but with the Harududu parts added, it looks even cooler. And yeah, you can see right here, this kit has a lot of accessories. But by far the coolest thing about the Hazanthalay 2 Raw is that if you live in the US, you will actually be able to get this from Bluefin. For the first time ever, Bluefin has actually managed to put one of the advanced Zeta kits up for pre-order. Now previously they have been sticking very hard to the wing kits, only occasionally deviating from them from time to time to do something from seed. But finally, 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 we have an advanced Zeta kit that you can actually get in the US. Now granted, it's not cheap, but remember, this kit is pretty darn big. So I would definitely recommend jumping on this opportunity if you are in the US, not only if you want this kit, but also if you just want to generally support P-Bandai releases coming out in the US for things that aren't wing. I'm gonna leave a link down in the description below so you guys can find that. And we are gonna move on to our next kit. All right, so the next kit's pretty underwhelming. It's just a petite guy in Justice Knight colors. Now, why they think the Justice Knight is marketable enough that they're gonna be able to pull this off, I don't know, but here it is. Yeah, I, I really don't get this one. Okay, and finally we have a little bit of a teaser, a little bit of extra information on the Hello Kitty Gundam crossover. And yes, that is a real thing. And from what I understand, the only reason this exists is because those two major Japanese franchises happen to have the same birthday. That's it. However, out of it, we are getting some Hello Kitty Plamo. Everything we've seen so far seems to indicate that it is going to be an SD cross silhouette of Hello Kitty as a mecha. This is the only picture of it we've seen so far, and they're basically just showing off that the runners are gonna be shaped like Hello Kitty's head. And that's actually pretty clever. I do like that a lot. I don't give a crap about Hello Kitty, but I, I, I do still kind of want this. Although it is also a little bit more expensive than the other cross silhouettes, so I don't know. And that is going to be it for Gumplin News today. Probably gonna be a bit of a longer episode just because of how long it's been. If you stuck around through my absence, thank you. If you haven't, be sure to resubscribe. If you're new to Channel 2S, be sure to subscribe for more Gundam and Gunpla content. And of course, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. And as always, I'm your host, Second Soundwave, and I'll see you next time. Take care, guys.